Welcome back to the Ransomed Heart podcast. I'm John Eldridge, and I hope that you listened to last week's podcast because we invited back to Ransomed Heart a former staff member, Paul Lavelle, who um, just a good, good man, got his counseling degree while he was working with us at Ransomed Heart, went on to uh, a very, very specialized ministry, bringing the four streams healing that we do into the lives of men in the military. Um, pretty elite warriors. And so Paul, Paul was in the middle of a story last time, and we actually had to cut it off. We're going to pick up with that story, and I want you to hear more of, of what they're doing, because if you know anyone uh, that fits this profile, whether, I mean, they may have fought in Vietnam, yes, uh, all the way up to the present, guys coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, um, this is a phenomenal ministry to send them to. So what happened for Mark then? Yeah, so Mark came, and, uh, I mean, he was shut down. Didn't say hardly anything, and we went after the healing and uh, started to bring up, you know, Lord, what would you have me say to him? What would you have me see? Mm. And God started to speak, and uh, it was pretty amazing the words that he gave me, and I started to speak, and he was just head down, you know, pretty much flat affect, you know, no emotion. Mm -hmm. And then God started to speak to me about what happened in mm. that battle. Mm. And, uh, and so the Lord said, uh, bring him back to that point, that time. And I've done that a number of times, and it's always, as you could imagine, it is incredibly hard because the men just want to seal that off, put it off to the side. But well, yeah. that's what's destroying them. Yeah. And uh, the very quality that makes a man particularly good in combat that ability to compartmentalize, yes, right? I mean, that men have that uniquely, mm -hmm. and women are going, yeah, right, I didn't tell me about it. Right. He does that all the time. It compartmentalizes things. Yes. It's a gift from God, but if you keep it in the compartment yeah. and you never bring it back out for healing, yeah. it'll take you down. Yeah. It, it is what you spoke about, the broken heart. The heart is literally broken. Yeah. And they just kind of push it off to the side, and it's just one more thing. You know, I'll deal with it. Right. Many of them think, well, i got a big enough heart. You know, I can just kind of deal with this. And right. so God came to him. We brought him back. And what we, we pray as he's going through it is, you know, the lie that Satan was right there. And in all of our lives, he's right there to just reinforce, you know, what has been said about the wound. What's the message? It was right there. And so what we ask the person that would do, in this case it was Mark, Mark, I want you to look around in all of the chaos, all that's going on. Do you see Jesus there? So he's back in the memory. He's back in the memory. In the grass. Yeah, yeah. I have him close his eyes. He's right there. Uh, by the way, uh, the other uh, men also were killed. He's mm. the only one that made it out. Mm. And it's right back there. And all of it just kind of comes right up. And we invite the healing ministry of Christ to come into that. Mm. And, John, it is, it is absolutely amazing to me. Every single man to the T that we have walked back into the defining moments in their lives. And we've asked Jesus, Lord, are you there? Mm. Will you come? He comes. Mm. And in this moment, mm. in all of the, the smoke and the fire, all the blood, all of it, Jesus was right there. Mm. What is he saying to you? And he says, I'm a son. I'm, mm. a, I'm a good man. I mm. didn't mess up. I did what I was trained to do. I didn't, and it wasn't your fault. I mean, it was just, it's a big thing in all of us because yeah. we carry it. It's our fault. Yep. And God comes from him. And, uh, and then what we do with the men is we go through kind of what are some of the things that you cannot forgive others in your lives. And many times the guys can't forgive the enemy. Mm -hmm. which is, that's a tough mm -hmm. thing, you yeah. know? No, But kidding. to step into that, but they carry that hatred, and right. Satan gets access. Mm -hmm. So we go through that. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive? Can you forgive the enemy? Can you forgive? And then the mm -hmm. most difficult thing that I have found is these men can forgive others. It's pretty amazing. They can forgive the enemy who's trying to kill them, but they can't forgive themselves. Mm -hmm. And they've carried so much of this guilt and shame with them mm -hmm. And so what I have them do is I have them write down on a piece of paper, what's the one, two, or maybe multiple things that you can't forgive yourself for? And uh, 
And so I give them time, and they they write it down. I just said, this is just between you and God. And then we uh, show the the clip of the Passion, and I show the one where Jesus is being scourged. Mm-hmm. And it's so hard to watch. Oh, it is. But I only show, like, the last 30 seconds of it. And then I turn and I ask him. I just said, you know, Jesus, he did that for us, right? I mean, he, he went to the cross for us. And he wants me to ask you, how many more lashes does he need to take mm. for you to forgive yourself? Mm. And that does it. And uh, then we take those pieces of paper and we burn them. Huh. And then when they're burned down to ashes, we take a scoop and go outside and say, Jesus, you said that it is finished. And we just give it to you. And yes. we do. And it's an amazing thing. We, we It's typically at night when we do it. And we throw these ashes out. And I'll tell you, it is every time it looks like diamonds as mm. the ashes go out. Mm. And these guys, you know, and then we pray over the men and. And then we, uh, as we go through the week, we end up doing a recommissioning into the kingdom of heaven for them. Mm. And uh, as, you know, Henry Nouwen, I, I love love his writing, and he talks about that, uh, that most of us are unhealed wounders. We're wounded healers. No, we're unhealed wounders, oh. and we turn into wounded healers. Okay. So I take gotcha. that front end, they get there, and they're unhealed mm. wounders. Mm. And... Then when they leave, they're wounded healers, mm-hmm. and they go back into their families, and they get you know uh, restoration and freedom like they've they've never experienced. Oh, it's it's incredible these stories of these guys, marriages rescued, literally, literally. lives rescued. You yeah. know, they they turn from taking their own life. Yes, marriages put back together, and and then what's amazing is they're they're being redeployed. Yeah. But then they go back in with a new heart, yeah. an ability to discern the spiritual warfare, yes. and an ability to share this with other men, you know, to go after other guys' hearts here. Absolutely. Uh, when the men leave, I ask them to jot down in a guest book that we have at the ranch and uh, just to share what, what did God do for them while they were there. And uh, I, I want to share this just short uh uh, note that the uh, command sergeant major of the 101st Airborne wrote. He says, uh, uh, Dear Paul, Keith, Kelly, Frank, Tom, who's our chef up there, and Scott, who's the ranch manager. First thing he says is, Forgive my spelling. He had traumatic brain injury, and he was carrying a recorder with him as he would go around. And I was thinking, Well, he's recording this for the chief of chaplains for the Army is kind of like he's an evaluating evaluate, right, you guys. Right, right. Yeah. Kind of evaluating us, you know. So I'm a little bit, you know, like, what's going on with that? Well, then I uh, I was chatting with him, and he kind of had this out, and he told me that it's part of his therapy, that what happened with the explosions that he experienced, he needs to be able to, to make sure that his thoughts are correct. So he puts this down on his uh, departing note to us. He said, starts off, he says, iron sharpens iron. I rode up Poppy Creek Road with my sword dragging, my armor in need of mending, with holes in it. My sword was chipped and rusty. You all have rearmed and refitted me with an understanding that can't be taken away from me. To recover my warrior heart will enable me to once again be that leader and can speak to other warriors and to help lead our number one resources, the sons and daughters who go forward and fight for our nation's interest around the world. Mm. No words can describe what each one of you have done for me. There will come a day that I will give back to you, quote, band of brothers, what you have given to me, Mm. and the will to fight again. Bless you all for your commitment and your devotion to helping to mend this warrior's heart and all the other warriors that have come here. Only true warriors can grip another warrior's hand to help him stand back up and rejoin the ranks. Mm -hmm. That was was pretty profound because when this guy came, he had said that, he said, Paul, I've lost the will to fight, and yet I'm going to be redeployed, and I'm going to be leading thousands of people back into battle in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's what God does. To these men, you know, they walk away very, very different. And what we tell them that we're after is we're after what just exactly what God's after for them to be whole and holy. Yes, it's so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. Um, 
Paul, as you were reading the, that letter, he mentioned your team. Tell us a little bit about your team. Yeah, um, all the guys on my team. Uh, Frank Fetzko uh, was a uh, he's a retired Navy SEAL. He uh, he was one of the platoon leaders for SEAL Team Six. If people don't know that, that's the elite Tier One team in the SEALs, and he spent uh, 23 years. Uh, just amazing, amazing man, but broken. Uh, again, just broken. Uh, the other gentleman on my team is uh, uh, Kelly Snap. Kelly was a lieutenant colonel, and he was a commander of troops with Delta Force. Kind of went in and, you know, again, another level one, tier one team, um, incredible elite warriors. And then uh, we've got a uh, new addition to our team is uh, uh, Keith Poole. And Keith is a colonel as well, and he was, uh, he was a commander uh, with the 82nd Airborne and a commander in Afghanistan with counterintelligence. And uh, I kind of tease him a little bit. We talk about when he's over there, he wears the man jammies <laughs> to, right. to get information. Um, but the, the wonderful thing about all of these men is each one of them came through the program. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they got the restoration of Christ. They've mm-hmm. got their hearts back. Their relationships restored. Um, their stories. I mean, John, I could sit here for hours really and tell you just story after story of when you look at these men and you look at what has defined their life uh, as being elite gladiators. We look at that and go, wow. And you said it earlier. You know, that that may be up front. That may be the pose. Uh, doesn't take away the strength that they have, but they hide behind it. As we all do. As we all do. Right. And um, uh, because it works. Um, for, but yet, for a while. For a while. That is so true. And then when they get to the point where they are just fed up, they have no place else to go. The alcohol doesn't anesthetize. Right. The pornography, the sexual addiction doesn't anesthetize. You know, all of it, the drivenness, doing more and more and more, doesn't anesthetize. Then all they've got to look is up. And here's another interesting thing is I've had the opportunity to, to talk with uh, so many of the special operations community, the elite guys. And, um, and, and I'm kind of focusing on that. But I also want to say that our, our troops are, as the Army calls them, the Joes, the G.I. Joes. Amazing stories, all of this. And our program is not just for the elite warriors. Um, but uh, what's interesting is that the faith amongst a lot of our, our troops, particularly the ones that you wouldn't think that they would have faith. And I talked to the commander of the SEALs. Uh, he was a captain. He was getting ready to retire. And, uh, and he found God in the middle of battle. And he said God had tried to get his attention a number of times, and he just kept pushing him away, pushing mm-hmm. away. And this one time it was pretty close, and he almost lost his life. And he said God showed up, and he's like, uh, do you think there's a reason why I've been trying to save you each time? You know, there's something I have for you to do. Right. And what I found is that there is a strong faith in God. And I had this one Delta uh, guy tell me that when you're in battle, you either believe in God or you don't. One or the other. He said, and I'll tell you, most of the time it pushes you to believe that there's a God because mm-hmm. you're praying for him to bail your butt out. Right. It's so true. Right. But what happens is, as so many believers, they're just believers, right? They believe God exists. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And heaven's coming one yeah, day. It's what Satan has stolen, right? Yeah. It's that it's the gospel part of what you talked about. Right. That's the that's it. That's what you get. And that's all there is. And so they they kind of feel like, you know, um, that's all I have left, you know, and, and that doesn't bring me much life. And so when they find out what we offer and it speaks to the masculine heart um, and it's not the idea of the Mr. Rogers deal, because so many of these guys as young boys have been wounded through that experience. Right. That doesn't bring out the, the warrior heart at all. But when they realize that they have a God and God is a warrior and the Lord is his name, when they start to see those kind of things and then they start to see the image of Christ, what was this guy like? And uh, they start to kind of relate to that like, oh, and then they come. And when they come, then they see that there is a God who is powerful. Mm. And they are made in his image. Mm-hmm. And that starts to kind of break the shells away. Mm. Oh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Yeah. 
So with a few minutes left, what else do you want to make sure gets said? Um, uh, I, I think the impact is that um, 100 percent of the men who have come to Operation Restored Warrior became broken, like the command sergeant major said, dragging their sword. Yeah. They leave restored, a hundred percent restored. Mm. Their marriages get restored, and I follow up with these men. Mm. And uh, you know, as the number gets larger, that's going to be a little harder to do. But um, they have uh, restoration that is real, and it's permanent. Mm. I just had this gentleman, this Mark Staff Sergeant, call me up uh, on the weekend on Saturday just out of nowhere. The guy that was in the tall grass? Yeah. Silver Star. Silver Star, yeah. And the other thing is is he's got like three bronze stars now as well on top of it. So just pretty amazing. Uh, He called me up and he said, uh, God really put you on my heart and I felt like I I wanted to call you. And I said, Mark, Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you did because I'm going to do this podcast and uh, you know, I said, I'm going to start writing this book about what we're doing mm. with ORW. Mm. And I'd love to have your permission, but I'd love to interview you. And he's like, absolutely. He says, um, you know, um, my life has changed. My wife just recently got pregnant. Mm. He said, we've been trying forever. The doc said it wasn't going to happen. When I was praying over him, the Lord told me that he was going to bless him with mm. children. And he's just like, I didn't, I didn't buy it. But he said, my wife just found out on Friday that she's pregnant. So it's an amazing thing mm-hmm. to have God use us in the way that he's doing it and to see these lives restored. Few things are this beautiful. Few things. To see people restored yeah. at this level, it's just absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. And there are thousands and thousands of men and women out there. And I want to say to your audience that— you know, it's it's so easy for us to look at a soldier, a Marine, an airman, uh, a sailor, and to see a physical wound, a lost limb, you know, a physical uh, wound in terms of like burns. or We can see that, and, and our heart just, it wrenches with sadness and sorrow. Right. But we have hundreds of thousands of troops that have come back, and John... I know you know this, but if you could see the damage in their soul, Mm -hmm. if you could see the carnage of what has happened to them Mm. in the physical, in the spiritual, in the emotional, we couldn't look at them. We just couldn't look at them. And when they come out to the ranch, that's what I see. Right. And my team sees it. And it's kind of like, okay, let's roll our sleeves up. Let's go after them. Right. Um, And the need is so great. And so I just want to say that as people pray for our troops, you know, pray for the restoration of their souls and their hearts because— oh, deep healing by Jesus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Come. Come to those places. And, yeah. And for the, those folks that are experiencing those deep, deep wounds, that Jesus would bring them to the surface mm-hmm. for them to you know, seek him mm-hmm. and— uh, and, and get the restoration. Yeah, absolutely. You are the first guest we've ever had on the Ransom Tower podcast, yeah. and, <laughs> uh, and and the reason why is I wanted I wanted folks to hear what you're doing. We have a very special heart for the men and women in the military. We just have a deep compassion, a love uh, for them and want so badly to bring this message to them because we know it works. Yes, it, it works. Does. This will bring healing. This mm-hmm. will bring restoration. Yeah. I got the coolest note the other day um, from a uh, lieutenant in the Marine Corps. And he was saying first in his note how deeply Wild at Heart had touched him because it had reconciled in his soul his longing to serve Christ and love Jesus, mm-hmm. and what he felt was his passionate calling to be an officer in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. he couldn't find a Christianity to help him with that. Yeah. And the Wild at Heart reconciled that. And, and then he shared that he was in Afghanistan. He was leading a platoon. And uh, his wife sent him walking with God. And he said, the idea that I can listen for the voice of God as I'm leading men, and he said, I didn't lose anybody because I was following Christ every day in that. And so, I mean, just 
whoa, yeah. if, if you know anybody who is in the military or retired uh, from serving yeah. in any branch of the military, a couple of thoughts, gang. One is get them wild at heart. Get them waking the dead. It will do such deep healing in their life. And then get them to Paul. Mm. Uh, get them to the Operation Restored Warrior because healing's available. And most of these people don't know where to find it. Yeah. And they just – alcoholism, um, suicide. I mean it's, it's bad. Dr- it's bad. Drug abuse, you know, and on and on it goes. So, Paul, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, they can uh, they can contact us through Operation Restored Warrior dot com. That's Operation Restored E D Warrior dot com. So you have and a website. We have a website. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they can contact us through that. Great. We've got a calendar. We uh, we do one program a month, and our goal is to offer two of these a month. And we're also offering an opportunity to go to bases around the country to kind of give the folks an idea of what they're set in, yeah. the larger story, yes. what's set against them. And it looks like we may get invited to Afghanistan in six months with the 101st mm. Airborne guys. Mm. And so I'd ask for your prayers for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so that's that's how they can get in touch with us. Mm. This is such a cool story because Paul was our resources guy here at Ransom Heart. But – he would get on the phone with people talking about problems with their order. <laughs> I, how come I don't have my five books of captivating for my study this week? You know, and he would end up counseling people for an hour on the phone yeah. through order help. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sorry about your order, ma'am. How's your heart? You know, and, and so we just finally said, Paul, you have to go do this. You have to go do this full time. And so, way to go. Yeah, thank w- you. Well done. It's just Thanks, huge. John. It's just huge. And. Um, this podcast will also be available on Paul's website as well. So, yeah. again, yeah. gang, if if you know folks that, that are in this kind of need in the military or, or retired military who still have the, the damage, um, yeah. you, now you know where to send them. Yeah. And, John, I, I, just before we close, I, I just want to say thank you. You saved my heart, my life, and in turn, thousands of other people now are, are getting saved and your message is absolutely anointed, and uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of all the military men and women out there that are getting their lives restored, mm. thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. Wow. Boy, this is, this is just such a powerful conversation. Um, thanks for listening in to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. You've been listening to John Eldridge and guest Paul Lavelle here, who went on to start a really, really awesome ministry called Operation Restored Warrior. If you want uh, more information about Ransomed Heart, come to RansomedHeart.com. And if you want more information about Paul's ministry, come to OperationRestoredWarrior.com.